but like every relationship since like you find out what you want Mm -hmm. So then it becomes harder every time to find someone who fits your criteria. Yeah. Welcome back to Mismatch, guys. Hello. We're back. Um, we are kind of been lazy on this. Uh, it's just been hard finding somewhere to record in the right time when you live with like 10 people. Yeah. We tried going outside, but... Turns out there's a lot of noises outside. It's just very, very, very windy in Australia all the time. So our audio sounded really bad. And then usually there's like 10 people here making a lot of noise. So we can't really record out there. So we're back to this spot. Yeah, but it's good. We kind of adjusted it. It looks a little bit more put together. It's more comfortable. My legs aren't cramped, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, so hopefully this is okay and... It's currently 11.20 a.m., so people are, like, just getting up here, so we will see if there's a lot of noises, because sometimes our roommates like to sing very loud. It's nice, though. It wakes me up in the morning. I think I wake you up in the morning. Yeah, what were you doing this morning? I had to get... I thought you were, like, packing to, like, leave or something, like... Yeah, I was just booting off, <laughs> heading on the next flight, abandoning you here. So it sounded like. No, I was, um, I ran out of contacts. And I had to get them from the the mm. med bag. It was at like 6.30 in the morning. And I was still asleep. And Kenzie was just rifling through all her stuff. And I was like, what the hell is going on right I now? Need, I need my eyesight. It's pretty important. But yeah, I know. I was like, shit. I need contacts. I was like, hey, Gal's waking up then. Because um, half of my suitcase was contacts. So there's a lot to unpack. Mm -hmm. But I found them. So And I can see. So yeah. that's good. Um, we're probably a little bit more tan than last podcast, I think. At least my arms and legs are. So, like, my face is definitely the exact same, but maybe my my arms. My body. I kind of have a farmer's tan going on right now, just because we walk around a lot and then wear shirts and it's sunny out, so. My face just doesn't tan. It just doesn't like tanning. So I just always look like a pale zombie, and then my legs look Brazilian, but my face is just still a pale zombie. It's pretty tan right now. Really? Every time I FaceTime anyone, they're like, you look so dead and true. pale. You can't... It's FaceTime. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's like a little 720p camera on the front of your phone. Yeah. You but even tell. like... Not that you guys can see this, but like if I'll take selfies, like in this selfie for the for the watchers, I look so pale, like dead. And then this... Not that one. And this one, I look pretty tan. Yeah, but it's... I don't know. Being a photographer, I know you can easily, like, the camera's on auto settings. Oh. And, like, the white balance will change. And you can, if you go, cool, like, cooler, if it thinks, like, you're in a really hot zone and it cools it off, then it makes you look whiter and more ghostly. If oh. you warm it up, it's more tan. So, a lot of it's just to do with, like, the camera you're using, too. I did not know that. Just look in the mirror in, like, good lighting, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, some days I feel like I look tan, and then the next day I'll wake up, and I'll be like, mm -hmm. nope, you little ghost, call me Casper. But it's been raining a decent amount since we've been here. It's We've had probably, like, three days of sun, and, like, what else, a week of rain. And it's then, not even rain, it's, like, it'll rain for, like, it'll be cloudy for, like, three hours, and it'll rain for, like, half an hour, and it'll be sunny for, like, two hours, and then I'll go back. Yeah, it's really hard to, like, make plans, but... We're getting there. It's supposed to rain all this week, too. It's good, though, because it's really dry here. Yeah, they definitely need it. Um, Just, like, we went for a walk in this park, and it was just... Well, most of the grass was dead. The trees were, like... Definitely have seen better days. So, I mean, I'm okay with it raining a little bit. Yeah. We just need to think of things to do. Yeah. We'll figure stuff out. I mean, you might be working this week, so... Possibly. Hopefully not. It's outside, though, so hopefully not if it rains. Oh, true. Maybe I should work at a golf course. Why don't you? Why don't you work in the clubhouse or something? Because I don't have my RSA. Just get it. Or say you have it. They're going to want proof. Then go get it. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um, RSA is like smart serve for Canada, by the way. If you're trying to wonder what that is. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on the first week and a half, almost two weeks? Mm, mixed feelings. It's cool. 
It's nice living in like a different culture and meeting new people and just seeing people's different perspectives. But I'm definitely a homebody, so I do miss my routine and spin mainly. <laughs> but it's really cool. And I'm excited to see other parts too. Mm -hmm. Have we explained our plan? We're like working here for like four months and then we're going traveling. But we're kind of just getting established. And I don't know, the first couple of days I was pretty homesick, but then. I mean, we're only here for five months. It's like not that long if you really think about life <laughs> in general. Like, I don't know. In the last month, we're just gonna be traveling around. So, I don't know. I like it. The it took me a couple of days to get used to everything. I was like a little homesick, and the first couple of days, I was like, oh, maybe this wasn't a good idea or something. You know, you start doubting yourself. But now that we're accustomed to everything, for me at least, I'm pretty used to it. And I like it. I don't know, it's warm. I was sick of the cold. <laughs> That's all I care about. It's almost, like, too warm now, though, because you can't... I mean, we walk, like, I'm not joking you. I had, like, one, like, 17-kilometer day where I walked 17 kilometers. We usually walk, like, 10K a every day. day. Yeah. And then I'm also... I started my training, so I've been, like, swimming, like, 800 meters. I went for, like, an 8-kilometer run today, and so on top of that, like, that's first thing in the morning, and then we come back, and then we walk another 10 we literally had a day where we got back like two o'clock and we just looked at each other and we we're like, I'm not moving for the rest of the day. Yeah, it's really draining. You don't realize how exhausting walking is. And it's just like pretty humid. Yeah, like heat and walking is a lot. Plus, especially when you're like coming from a place like Toronto or like Mississauga where you don't really walk a ton, especially mm -hmm. in the winter. The difference of just walking everywhere, it's like, like you're so tired. Like, mm -hmm. we go to bed at, like, 9.30, like, every night. <laughs> yeah, which I kind of like. We're first ones up here, pretty much. Yeah, we get our own, like, time in the morning before everyone's awake. But, I mean, I'm used to that because yeah. I always have that at home. Mm -hmm. But I like it. Like, what we're saying, though, is that by, like, 12 o'clock, it feels like we had so much, like, we already accomplished so much. Mm -hmm. And then, like, from, like, 12 to, like, 7, it just flies because we usually just, like, are chilling or figuring stuff out. Yeah. I don't know. I officially applied to college. Oh, did you? Yeah. What did you apply for? Business, just general business. And then if I want to, like, major or minor, I can. Yeah? Yeah, I'm excited. What did you apply to? George Brown, Humber, and Sheridan. Was it hard? Or uh, did mom just have to mail in everything? Th well, it was so snake. Okay, basically, let me explain. So when I very first set up my account with the college website you use in Canada, mm -hmm. um, there's a transcript section there. And for some reason, York and Port Credit weren't coming up. So they were like, oh, contact your schools and you have to get them and then send them to us. Like yeah. when you apply. So I was like, okay. So then I like went to Port Credit, bought my transcripts, contacted York, bought my transcript and everything was fine. But I couldn't actually apply to my program because it was still too early. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, I'll just leave it until I know I can apply and then I'll just mail them out. So then it was still before I left, not open. And then I guess it, it opened like the day I left. And so my mom, we the plan was that she was just going to mail them out and apply. So I was talking to my friend and she was like, oh, by the way, like applications are due like in five days. <laughs> and I was like, what? So then I just went back onto the website and like re figured everything out and got to move to the next step where you actually apply yeah. and then on there there was another transcript subsection and you just clicked a button and it automatically requested it from pc and from york and i never had to pay the money and get the transcripts in the first place <laughs> so we just spent like a hundred dollars on transcripts for no reason but a hundred i thought it was like five bucks well york's was 80 for three yeah and mm. then port credits was 15 for five or five. What? Fifteen for three. So was the due date actually February first or whatever? Or yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, <You got> lucky. <laughs> I was very lucky that I happened to be talking to my friend when I was, but doesn't matter because we applied and I got it saying that an email saying they got the transcripts. Well. So hopefully George Brown. Yeah. Why George Brown? Um, I'm a very big city person and like the business campus or the business building is like right in the heart of the city oh, Yeah, and it just seems like a good program. I mean, if we're going for best program, I should go to Sheridan, but like, I know I would not love that. That's like my bottom choice. That's like, if I don't get into anything. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I just think it'd be really fun. And I like commuting and I want to see what it's like to be in the city because one day I want to live there. So it's like a good test. That's good. I mean, I feel like you, it, college just like you can't really go wrong. They're just business programs. Yeah. George Brown's good. I think Humber's up there. Humber's really Sheridan's good. Sheridan's good. They're all good schools. It's just, yeah. George right. Brown and then Humber and then Sheridan. It's all location. What do you, the feel you want. Yeah. And it's, it's close. Like, I have a lot of friends that go to school downtown, and, like, the building is close to them. Oh, yeah? So then I can, like, see them when we are in between classes. Go to Fresh all the time. Yeah, it's near broke. it's near Fresh. It's near Spinco, Toronto. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. Not for the learning part. Just, I was going to say. Just for the Toronto part. seemed like a couple months ago you were, like, hesitant on even going. What changed? Um... I don't like not being in school. (laughs) I'm such a class person and I'm such a lecture person. I'm just very much like the way I learn is very much a school platform. Mm -hmm. And I think I could evolve what I want my career to be while getting the degree too, Mm -hmm. which is not, I mean, still looks good. So why not? I just don't like not learning. I don't know. I feel like I'm just plateauing. So yeah, if you're not in school, you have to be pretty disciplined on teaching yourself stuff. Yeah, and I feel like I was just focusing on non-educational things like spin. Yeah, but... Which is what I want to do, but if say. I want to do that, I kind of need to know the educational part of it, too, more than just training. So. Do you know what the business program, like, entails? You know, like, it will reflect on what you want to do in life? Uh, since it's just general, you can take it really any way. It just gives you, like... It's more like management. Is there like a field you want to go towards? No, I'm probably just like entrepreneurship. It's just, I just want to, I don't know anything about business. Mm. And the way I learn is in school. So just having a base platform knowledge of it will be good, I think. Meet some people. Yeah. Meet some connections. Yeah. I think it'll just be fun. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I think it'll be cool. And then when I'm out of there, I can just go straight into spin. Yeah. And hopefully I'll be trained and good by then. We'll be separated. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. Oh True. They'll be like the pod, but different <laughs> time zones. Yeah. That'll be weird. How, uh... So we've been talking to our parents recently. I know they listen to this, but our parents are starting to get into some really weird stuff that they never did while we were at home. Um, for instance... They were supposed to go to downtown Toronto and go shopping and have drinks and dinner together. Yeah, that was never heard of with our parents. There's no way they even leave the house. But it's not even like that sounds okay. Like they were going to go on Queen Street and go to Fresh, which is a vegan restaurant. Yeah. Like they basically were doing my day, but like with them as a date. Like boutique stores and vegan food. (laughs) Our parents are like the kind of parents that are like date night is staying home, ordering pizza and watching a movie it's like they both work from home most of the time um so they don't really leave home that much so like just getting out of home is kind of like unheard of even if it's not together just like going out so now like they're going like they'll have glasses of wine together at night and it's actually cute though i think i know it's good i think we needed to leave (laughs) it's probably strengthening the relationship yeah because now i'm like i kind of just steal mom yeah. So then it's more like mom and I are married and dad and you are just kind of siblings. <laughs> and so now she can actually hang out with dad. And they're actually like, there's nothing else to do because no one's home. So they They'll probably appreciate hang out each, other each other more. Yeah. Because this is kind of a glimpse of what could come in the next couple of years. Just them do and catch yeah. you. So like without us being there, they're probably like, shit, it'd be really lonely. I know. But it's good. Like, mm-hmm. they've never, I've never, ever, ever heard of them sitting down, having wine, watching a movie together. Mm-hmm. Crazy. It's good, though. No, it's really good. It's just like, that's not our parents. Our parents don't do that. I think they miss us, though. Yeah, <laughs> they definitely do. I think mom is definitely uh, misses me because I text her 24-7 here, and she's like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's like a breakup. It's like if you guys just text all the time after, it's never going to heal. I know. It's so bad. I FaceTime her like every morning. I know. I'll go. Kenzo will get up usually like 15, 20 minutes before me. So she'll go and do her routine and whatever, like get food. 
So then I'll come after her and then I'll have like 10 minutes just by myself or whatever in the kitchen. And I'll come back into the room after 10 minutes and I like 10, nine out of 10 times mom's on the screen <laughs> no matter what. And like the time difference when we wake up, it's like mid afternoon there. So yeah. she's usually like, even with like her grandmother or something. Sometimes she's like in the car. She always, no, nah, that's a lie. She doesn't always answer. Mm-hmm. She answers when it's like things that she wants to talk about. Mm-hmm. But if I'm like, I'm anxious. Ah, she's like, I, I met, I met good fellas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anything that we did this week stick out for you? You want to talk about? What? Like, like, I, a, like what, what was your favorite part of your first week here so far? Um, I really liked when we went to like, we went to like a house party. Oh yeah, that, that was That kind of like, it was really nice. It looked over like all Sydney. It's kind of like in the hills. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all dudes, but <laughs> it was fun to meet people. Like we met people that haven't seen snow. Yeah. Which is like kind of, like I expected it, but at the same time, it's kind of crazy if you think about it. Yeah. Because like, I don't know, I was born in winter. So it was like probably my first time going outside is when I saw snow in my life. Literally. <laughs> what about you? Um, probably, ready? Who's going to guess it? One, two, three, spin. I probably liked the really? day. I you didn't even like spin. <laughs> I know, but I just like having my routine. Yeah. Like, I had went to spin, and then I got, I went to a cafe and just bought myself food, which was like, and we don't, I, we don't do that. So, it was so nice and so delicious, and I just sat there for like three hours, and it was so good. Why don't you do that more? If it makes you that happy. Because I don't want to spend money. <laughs> so? What's the point of having money if you're miserable? So I can pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> they can ask you the same thing. Yeah. Treat yourself. Do it. I did. I got a nose piercing. Yeah. That was probably another one of my favorite things. It was very oh, yeah. spontaneous. Why'd you do that? Uh, I've been wanting a nose piercing for a while. But I was too scared to get it because... Um, not because of the piercing itself, because I have 10 piercings already. So, like, and pain doesn't scare me at all. Mm-hmm. Which sounds like so weird, like, oh, I don't feel pain. But, I don't know, it's not scary. Like, that really doesn't hurt. But, like, all my piercings usually get infected. So, what just comes with getting a piercing, like, you know it's gonna get infected and you're gonna have to go through, not to, sorry for the squirmish people, but like the pus and the swelling and the redness. But then, it goes away. And then you like your piercing after that, like, few weeks of pain. But a nose piercing is right in the center of your face. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I, like, I really, really want it, but I don't want to have pus coming out of my nose and everyone see it. But in Australia, I don't know anybody, and I don't see anyone every day, so I don't really care if my nose is really red and gross, because I don't know these people anyways. (laughs) Except the people we live with, I guess. Yeah, but, like, it's not like I had to go to school and see my friends. Yeah. Because I've been wanting it since, like, high school, but I was too scared. And then at York, I had to see my dance friends. And I was like, eh, I don't want to yeah. have them. Or especially at York, I had to do, like, facial contact. And then I'd be rubbing my infected nose all over them. That's gross. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was kind of just like, oh, it seems like pretty good timing. I'll just get it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it was... I was kind of nervous it was going to be more, because everything's more expensive here. Piercings are already pretty expensive, so I was like, oh god, how much is this going to be? But it was 60, which is really fair. That's like, basically, this, that's like the same as at home. And the guy was super nice. And I had my own private room, which usually they just kind of do it in the middle of the piercing shop. So that was cool, too. Um, yeah, it was fun. Are you going to get a tattoo while we're here? Uh, yeah. What are you going to get I don't know. I think I'm just gonna, it's like, well, I have to live here more and then whatever I resonate the most with, or if we have an inside joke or something or a memory I really liked, I'll probably get something symbolizing that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I think so. I just, I mean, I love tattoos. So any excuse, not not that that's an excuse, but any reason to get a tattoo, I'm like, yes. Tattoos are really big here. Like I see most people, I would say like, everyone has a tattoo four out of ten people like almost majority of people like have at least one and if not like a sleeve yeah but that's great because like for me i like love when guys have tattoos so i'm like oh you're all so cute really because they're all so tan yeah i haven't seen too many like super attractive guys 
No, which is kind of surprising. Well, no, okay, that's that a lie. Everyone is decently attractive compared to where we've come from. Because, like, at home, no offense to the people at home, there's, like, not that much to play with. Mm-hmm. But, so, like, everyone here is, like, you know, it's still a bump up. But it's not, like, the amazing, beautiful surfer boys. But, I mean, that party we went to, everyone there was pretty good looking. Really? I thought they all kind of, like, they're all, like, muscular, but they're, like, chunky muscular. Yeah. They were all just really nice. And more about personalities. Yeah. But. Because you found a lover already. I did. And by lover, I mean he loves her. Oh, I was like, I was like, no, I didn't. Yeah. Um, it's got really resonated with Ken's. I was talking to this this guy at the party, and he was, like, really nice, and I was just, like, having small talk, and I didn't get the vibe that he was, like, into me in that sense, because, like, most of the guys I was talking to there were just, like, you're Canadian. Mm-hmm. Cool. Like, just, just being friendly, really, because, you know, we were the new people at this party. But I guess this guy was talking to me in, like, an into me kind of way, and then it was, like, our roommate's friend. So then she was, like, oh, yeah, like, he's really into you. But I thought she was talking about this other guy. So I was, like, yeah, great. <laughs> and and then he she she told him that I was into him, too. But, but I'm not. And now he was... Me- he only messaged me once, and I said no. So it's okay. Check your shot. <laughs> Do you find it odd, like... So you're hearing about like all the boys at parties and stuff like even though you're my brother um i did up until like maybe i graduated high school true um and then oh yeah because that's when you were like in your protective phase well yeah you were like 13 <laughs> <laughs> 13 i was like 15 when okay. i graduated you were like f- just turned 15 so 13 and 14 was when you were in high school for me Oh, okay, that is young. But anyways, and it was like all my friends liked you, and they were like 16, 17, so. What a time. Um, but until, I guess, I left the picture, um, yeah, it was a little weird, but then after that, I was like, I kind of like understood that you're a girl. Yeah. And you like guys. <laughs> I don't know. It was like, it was fine. It's, you know, it's not like you, you're going to hook up with every person you see. No. Um, I'm so picky. Yeah, you only go for decent <laughs> people, so then that's a nice thing, too. Yeah. Plus, I feel like we just have a really... Our relationship is, like, so past that. Yeah. Like, it's not like... I'm like, ew, Kyle, I don't want to hear about that. Well, yeah. I mean, there's probably some things I still don't want to hear. Well, yeah, obviously, but... Like... <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like it's not like... Like, you're my brother, but it's more of, like, a friendship. Yeah. Like, I was... I was asking, like, girl advice, I guess, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so, like it's to you. chill. I think we just, like, like, growing... I mean, even, like, growing up, we weren't, like, super, super close. Um, yeah, we weren't super far. No, 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 we were, like, close. We're not, like, where we are now. And yeah, then but you it's just, not, like, like... mature. I feel like we were just always very understanding of each other. I think our parents made sure that we weren't... Like, if I did something bad, like, I would had to, like, make amends. Yeah. It wasn't, like, there could never be bad blood. Or yeah. Or else, like, we were shunned. <laughs> That's true. Like, I think we only fought, like, a few times. Yeah. We also were just, like, I mean, for me, like, I was just really scared to get in trouble. Yeah. So I knew if, like, I argued with you, I'd get in trouble. <laughs> by me or by, like, your parents? No, by the parents. Oh, really? I was just, like... I mean, you can totally see it in me now still. I just have the worst guilty conscience in the world. Oh, yeah, I know. And I just, like, am a slave to please people. Like, that's all I want to do. So I was just like, oh, my God, if I, like, fight back with Kyle, Dad's going to be disappointed. So I didn't really ever. And plus, I think I just understood, like, your prop. Like, as a kid, like, if you pick, like, sometimes you'd be sassy and try to pick arguments. But realistically, I was like, I'm two years younger than him. He's probably right. <laughs> so there's no really reason to argue. I don't know. Like, I kind of just did my thing. You did your thing. Yeah. Like, if I had friends over, you never, like, told me, like, leave the yeah. basement or something, you know? It's kind of just, like, a mutual respect. Yeah. And I think that's the main thing. Like, people are so catty with their siblings. Mm-hmm. But, like, you just have to, like, put yourself in their shoes almost. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, I think it's just understanding one another. Mm-hmm. And we were just, like, raised really well with each other. I don't know. It was just a mutual respect. And our parents just made sure we didn't hate each other because I don't think they'd be able to deal with it either. Yeah. It's <laughs> a constant fighting. Yeah. 
we definitely were just raised like as a family to have good relationships like i know a lot of my friends growing up were like oh you're so lucky like you have such a good connection and relationship with your parents like you told your mom that that happened at school i could never tell my mom that Mm -hmm. so i think it's really just all openness yeah our parents never like made us well one like they never grounded us like it was never like severe consequences Mm -hmm. like it was more they looked at things that we did poorly as like learning opportunities yeah and like what not to do instead of like just punishing us and then making us scared to do bad things they would more explain like why it was wrong and what you can learn from it and then i feel like in that sense i didn't want to do it again because then i understood what i should have done she's not mad they're just disappointed and that (laughs) is 10 times worse (laughs) because then you're like (gasps) I disappointed Mm -hmm. them. Because if they're mad, they're just like, whatever. You guys are stupid. I'm not going to my room. Yeah. But if they're disappointed in you, like you, you messed up. Mm -hmm. That's never good. So I think the main reason we have such a close connection with each other and our family is just being honest and not being afraid to tell them what, what's going on in your life or what's on your mind. Mm -hmm. Because like, People look at parents on such a pedestal, but, like, they have been in your shoes. Like, I used to, like, I told my mom, like, everything because she has experienced it all and has been, like, a 13-year-old girl and knows exactly what I'm going through. And she's not going to get mad at me for it. Like, and if anything, she can tell you what to do and what not to do in that sense. Like, growing up and going through, like, puberty, like, I didn't have half of the, like, horror stories I did just simply because... I like I talked to my mom when I didn't know things or felt weird while like sometimes puberty like for girls can be really really rough because they don't know what to do and they don't talk to anyone yeah and then yeah then it's just bad so I feel it's all just honesty and it's so like cliche but it's so true mm-hmm. I felt like we we're talking about things we find attractive in other people yesterday which is I guess it's kind of another weird thing to talk to your sibling about but life talks you said that being close with their family is like one of the most important things yeah i just hate like like so many people think it's like cool Mm. we're not even cool i don't know why they do it to just be like really rude to your family and i just don't like i i understand if say you're having a bad day and you like snapped and then a few hours later you went and apologized that's fine but like I have, there's so many people in my life I can think of where they're just so, like, for no reason, so rude to their parents. Like, like, oh my God, like, just like one instinct I can think of is I was at someone's house and their mom, like, made a bunch of snacks and stuff. And I was like, oh, here, like, you and Mackenzie, like, come sit down and have these. I made them for you. And the person was just like, oh, mom, like, why did you do that? We're going out. I don't want those. And just, like, left. Mm hmm. And I'm like, she, they lo- she just did such a nice thing for you. Like, why do you have to be so rude? Sure, if, like, we had plans, we're going out. could have at least been like, oh, thank you so much. Maybe we'll eat them after, but we actually have plans. Like, it's yeah. so easy. I just think it's so disgusting. Like, why are you treating someone like that? Yeah, I used to spend a lot of time with this person who was not as nice to their parents as they could. I mean, to be fair, like, they didn't really understand each other that well. Mm-hmm. But I'd almost, like, not want to go over. Because it's so awkward when, like, your friend and their parent fight. Yeah. And then you're just there, like, observing, and like, a neutral point of view. And you can't really say anything, even if you agree with, like, one side. Yeah. Because, like, obviously, like, if you agree with your friend, you're not going to tell a parent that they're wrong. If you agree with their parents, then your friend's going to be like, what the hell? Like, yeah. So it's just, like, awkward. Like, it's such a, like, turn off to go and visit. Because it's just like something weird's gonna happen. I'm gonna feel uncomfortable. I know. It's so uncomfortable. And they just feel so like, I don't know. You look at them like, why are you, what, what do I not know about you that makes you wanna do that to someone? Like, I thought you were cool. Mm hmm. Oh, that's just, ugh. no, I hate that. Do you find anything else like super attractive or like a necessity in people that you're interested in? Um, I think someone who is understanding and doesn't like judge right away Mm because for me at least like I have anxiety and sometimes like it's hard to understand the reason I'm feeling the way I am without being like oh like you're so annoying why are you thinking that way yeah so someone who can like have patience I guess 
And, like, uh, be empathetic. Yeah. And, like, try to help me and not judge me. Because mm-hmm. it's a lot... I mean, I agree. Like, a lot of the times the things I'm saying, it's, like, in the moment, I'm just really anxious and it's stupid. But it's, like, when you're angry and someone tells you to calm down, it's, like, that's not helping me. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I just think someone who's just treats people well... <laughs> It's a good thing. It's it's kind of hard to find now. Just like genuinely good. Genuinely. Yeah. Not like for an ulterior motive. Yeah. Or to look good or something. Yeah. What about you? Um, I told you that told you this yesterday, but I thought about this because this might sound a little deep, but um, somebody's not afraid to be humiliated, and what I mean by this is like if somebody, I don't know, has an accident or it's like slip and falls or says something weird or just i don't know shows up wearing like a suit and tie to like a fucking pool party or something you know like they're mm-hmm. not afraid to be embarrassed yeah and they like, accept it and i just think it's like some people just take it like way too seriously yeah and um i don't know i just like people that can accept their flaws and accept when they like screw up and kind of just make a joke of it yeah because then your life is going to be so like you're gonna live life so seriously yeah and that's like the worst thing so just like something like that that's like really i guess turn on or whatever like something i look for someone who can laugh at themselves yeah what do you think you've learned from like previous relationships about like the things you've been through and now you know like what you want in a future relationship like good things and good like standards to have um okay where to start <laughs> you want to start with like what i look for or just like what are some generally good things just like or what i've learned i guess yeah um what i've learned i guess to your point was kind of like try to understand their position more um sometimes you can get set on your position and your Mm -hmm. mindset and you don't understand where people are coming from you just think it's crazy yeah and then if you tell them they're crazy for thinking that oh you're done yeah like i'll have like i'll whatever i'll do my own thing like i'll do my actions and then a month later i'll look back on it and be like how did i not like see what they're feeling or like why did i do that or like you know yeah it's kind of like i guess understand their point of view yeah that's a big one um that's like what i've learned what I look for um well like my personal type I guess (laughs) is like adventurous not afraid to like go off the grid or go off the beaten road I guess and just like a nice genuine person yeah who's close with their family that's a bonus too that's good sounds like a good person yeah what about you sorry ignore our roommates if you can hear that (laughs) um I think from what I've learned from my past relationships is just to have better communication. Yeah, that's um, a big one. I was always, like, pretty good with it, but I tend to... Um, it's hard to explain. I I have emotions, but I have, like, very, very few of them. Mm-hmm. And it's really, really hard to communicate that I'm not holding my feelings from them. There's just genuinely nothing there. And it's hard for people to understand that. So I just need to like commu- commu- like reassure and communicate more um, that like I I am happy in the relationship. I just don't have a lot of emotions, and mm. I just don't I don't express them unexpress them that much. Even if they're there, I just don't really I can't really find them. I don't know. Yeah. So and just to be like if I'm feeling upset, tell them I'm upset, or if I have a problem, tell them I have a problem. Yeah, I think. I guess I have another one. It's, like, actually communicate how you feel. Yeah. Don't, like, try to imply things or try to, like, do things to make them see it. Yeah. Just literally just go up and tell them how you feel. Because, like, trying to make them guess is never going to work. Yeah. They could guess wrong (laughs) and do the opposite. Exactly. No, I just... I'm very independent. So I always am... I don't know. I never am, like, oh, like, they don't need to hear my problems. They got their own problems. And then I just try to figure it out for myself. And then they'll start, like, catching on that something's up. And mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I don't know. And then and then I also don't even realize when I have a problem. I just kind of, like, will be, like, kind of sad that day. And they'll be like, oh, why are you sad? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just sad. <laughs> so it's really confusing. But definitely just to be more communi- communicative. Yeah. Is that a word? Yeah. Um, 
What do I look for in a person? Someone who is, will push me to do, like get out of my comfort zone more and do more things, but not too much. Yeah. Like there's a fine line between like trying to make me the best version of myself and then like <laughs> pushing me off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> so someone who's just like gonna help me grow, I'd say. Um, someone who's willing, I like I like going out a lot, but I also am such a homebody. So someone who's also in that sense, because I always tend to go for the people who aren't homebodies at all. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't work well. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, someone who's just genuinely kind and is willing to try th- new things, because I like not the most basic things. So someone who's willing to try them, aka come to a spin class with me. <laughs> I have another one then. Um, someone that like wants to see you succeed. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's similar to like pushing you, but like someone who gets joy out of seeing you. Yeah. Succeed and accomplish things. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big one. Not someone who like doesn't care or like you say, look what I did, and they're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like someone who like if you're playing sports will like come to your games and you know support you that way. Yeah, that's a big one. Because if they're not supporting you and motivating you and pushing you to be better you're just you're not gonna grow mm. and if you're not growing then what are you doing do you have a type that you look for okay so like this is or this is emotional the thing. Or whatever. the type i describe and feel i want is never the one i end up with yeah so like for me i would say like lighter eyes with dark hair i like preferably tall i feel like every girl likes people yeah. who are tall but i'm pretty short so like you don't gotta be that tall and i'm um not a muscular build i like like big shoulders and maybe tan would be nice but i always end up with really skinny usually blonde still light eyes pale like just complete opposite <laughs> and i don't know why because that's not my ideal person but that's just always the way it seems to work out. <laughs> That's fair. But ideally, like my dream boy, like I'm just thinking like Ian Somerhalder for all the girls out there. Damon from the Vampire Diaries, if you don't know who that is. Like he's great. I love a man like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Or like Zac Efron, like that kind of look. Yeah. Kind of, do I fit your description? I'm like kind of tall. Yeah, but you don't have dark hair. Oh, yeah, is my hair, if you're watching, is my hair... It's brown. Blonde. Some people tell me I'm straight blonde. You're like brown, but you have natural blonde highlights. So what's that, dirty blonde? Yeah. Like we have the, well, my hair is who knows what color anymore, but that was my natural hair color too. Okay. I'll say like dirty blonde then. It's like dirty blonde because you're not brunette because since you have blonde But it's more brown than blonde. Yes, it's definitely more brown than blonde. People literally will say, no, you're blonde. You're blonde. Yeah, no, you're not blonde. You're not blonde. Let me show you what blonde looks like. Mm -mm, You're not blonde. But yeah, I guess you would fit it kind of, yeah. So just like pull up my Instagram and then if you, <laughs> you look like me, just you can probably... You know that, you know that theory or whatever? That, that you aren't to your dad? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you're just, you're it's just your brother. It's just to my brother. <laughs> but like, hey, <laughs> your last... Some of the people that you've been with look a lot like me. Who? Your last two? People would tell me I look like them all the time. I'm into, like, if we're going off this, you're into your family theory. <laughs> It'd be, like... Not, like, personality. A looks. mix of you and mom, I'd say. Like, yeah. I'm, like, if we're going, like, ideal, ideal, I'm just going, like, a little bit... Not, like, tall, but, like, a nice, like, 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, so, like, a little bit tall. You know, a little height. Um, dirty blonde, blonde um that's kind of it i guess <laughs> like so if you're tall and dirty blonde <laughs> tall and dirty blonde and then just like cool and adventurous and you're fun. set so i guess that's my type but like so any single girl in muskoka essentially because that's what they all look like yeah but that's that's when you have to get like a nice genuine cool girl yeah that true. cuts like three quarters of them yeah out. yeah so like i don't know it's like a mix of you and mom if I was if you, two inches if you taller. you grew a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm really short. I'm only 5'3". Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. that's the average height for a girl. 
but so i said a little bit above average it's still short it's a little height to them yeah you feel like not taller than me i feel like you subconsciously <laughs> like legs i do like legs mm-hmm. i guess but if i had to pick butter boobs i'd pick legs <laughs> <laughs> that's my new answer to that question <laughs> butter boobs legs <laughs> I know one time I was watching a video and someone was like, love a good elbow. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Do you have any weird, like, if they have, like, long nails or something? Like, is that, like, you have, like, something weird that's out of the ordinary that you like? Oh, that I like? Yeah. Uh, no, not that I can think of. No. I like tattoos. Yeah, I guess that counts. Um, No. No, I can't really think of it. You know what I don't really like, though? What? You know those really, really big birthmarks that are, like, super dark? Yeah. And they, like, I don't like when they're, like, massive. Yeah, I guess that's fair. But, like, I would never not date someone because of that. <laughs> True. <laughs> I think I like girls with tend to have shorter hair. Yeah, you... Not, you, like, short. Not, like, short. You just don't, like, super long. Like, top of your boob level and up, My, like, I'd say. Yeah, like, people with, like, really long hair, I don't know, kind of gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, and it, a, a, being a girl who has had long hair, it's freaking annoying. Yeah, probably, like, just under your shoulder and, like... Like a area. short medium length. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's a good hair length to have, being a girl with it. Mm-hmm. Just, it's easy to maintain. Though I kind of miss having long hair. Are you looking for any relationship? Or do you, like, live in the, the single life? Um, I've been single for like almost two years now, which is great, but no, I honestly don't mind being single. I was like sad. I like really like, I honestly really like being alone, which sounds so sad, (laughs) but, um, no, like I'm more just living and if something comes and they work well with me, then great. And if not, I am totally cool doing my own thing because I can literally do anything I want. Don't have to worry about anything, which is great. And I am super okay i don't know how to put this without sounding obsessive i'm i'm really really uh like working on myself mm-hmm. so having someone else there and it takes away from that that sounds really bad but no that's true um i feel like until i find someone where i want to focus they make me want to focus less on myself then i'll know what's right but if i'm just talking to them and i feel like oh i could have been mm-hmm. training then it's not right. Hmm. So I think just if the right person comes, I don't want to just jump into something because I'm bored. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's what so many people do. That's what most people do. <laughs> so stupid. See, like, I'm... I, what, I've been single for, like, half a year or something now. Mm. And, like, I'll go through, like... Because before that, I was in a relationship for, like, four years. Not consecutively, but pretty much. And, like... I'll go through, like, withdrawals where I'll be, like, it'd be really nice to just snuggle up with somebody and watch some Netflix. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just at the age where, like, yeah, this is, like, when you got to, you know, get your shit together. And it's hard to get, let alone get your own shit together, but get your own shit together while also having somebody who's, like, doing their own thing but wants to take care of you and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard. Um, but you know, there's some times where I was like, you know, a little companionship would be nice. <laughs> Having someone right here would be pretty good right now. But see, like when I started, like my first relationship was in 12th grade and like that, I had no experience in relationships. So it was just like any girl that was interested in me and like that kind of sounds bad, but like, even though my first relationship was awesome and it lasted like two and a half years, so it was actually a good one. But like every relationship since, like you find out what you want. Mm-hmm. So then it becomes harder every time to find someone who fits your criteria. Yeah. So now I'm like, I'm getting really close to like figuring out like what I actually actually want. Yeah. Like almost there. So now like when I see somebody like maybe three years ago, I'll be like, oh, like this could have potential. But like now I'm like, okay, she, like th- she doesn't do this or like she doesn't think this way. Like, no. Mm-hmm. And like it goes through that. And now it's like, I think for me, it's a lot harder to find somebody who i know will be like completely compatible yeah 100 like um so that's probably why and like i guess right now we're like in australia and then we're in muskoka and then in the winter who knows like where i'll be so it really doesn't make any sense yeah yeah right now you definitely 
that would be difficult. Yeah. You would need someone to who wants to travel to. Yeah. I just like have I have a hard time personally like getting with girls that I don't one like find completely attractive or two like think is like a good person. Oh yeah, I can't just like go out and, and hook up with someone to hook up with someone. Yeah, like half the reason I don't like going to bars like everyone's like, Oh like we'll meet girls and stuff but like most of the girls you meet at the bar are just like I don't know meh. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know? Like I'd rather just not. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't know, it's just personally like I can't just see like someone across the room be like, that's the girl like mm-hmm. like I'd have to talk to them, get to know them. No, whatever. I, I totally agree with that. I think that's why I don't, I, we don't go out that much. Yeah, I know. I, like, I'd rather just go to, like, the beach and run into somebody playing volleyball yeah, than like, I would be so drunk. Yeah, that's so much more authentic. Yeah. Like, if you have to get super hammered just to, like, meet somebody, I, there's a good chance they probably aren't, like, the best person. Yeah, and they're um, probably not that into you. Unless they're, like, in the same situation where, like, I don't know, maybe their friends dragged them out or something. But, again, yeah. it's, like, it's kind of rare, I guess. Or, like, the chance of that happening is pretty low. Yeah, and, like, be at our age, like like we kind of touched on earlier, like most of the time people are just trying to get into a relationship because there's nothing else to do, yeah. and they just feel like they need to. So then yeah. like they talk to anyone and anything and everything just because they're bored. Or they feel lonely. Yeah, or they're lonely, which is fair. Like we all get lonely sometimes, but it doesn't mean you have to like drag someone else into it if mm-hmm. you're not willing, if you don't actually have a connection with them and you don't actually like them. Because I know, like, girls do that a lot where they, like, lead you on, lead you on, lead you on. Um, I've done that before, 100%, I can say. Yeah. So, it's just, like, you have to be picky. I hate that. It's, like, I've... It's happened to me so many times. Like, yeah, girls are the worst for like, it. Like, you'll have, like, a good interaction and then you'll be like, oh, like, what's up? And then sh- she'll be like, oh, like, not today, but, like, let's do something later. She's like, oh, like, cool. And you, like, keep messaging them and, like, the same excuse, same excuse. And yeah. you're like, ah, it's, like, so annoying. It's literally the worst. I'd rather you just say, like, no, you suck. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather that hard than just, yeah. hey, how's it going? Like, every now and then. Because I did that a lot in high school. Mm-hmm. So now I try to be as blunt as possible in a nice way. Yeah. Just be like, sorry, man. I was really drunk. I'm not into it. Yeah. That's a lot, like, way better. Yeah. Then they'll be half as hurt as they would when you keep canceling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that wraps up a pretty good podcast. Thank you guys, we talked about some some good topics. Yeah. it's. I think it might get sunny out later, so we might go to the beach or something. I really hope so. It's a rough life we got. Sorry, everyone at home. And I know. It's storms. so rife. <laughs> rife? It's, it's so rife. It's so rough. Should we go to the beach or the city? Mm, I don't mm, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, this has been Mismatched from Australia. Second episode. Maybe we'll uh, post bi-weekly again. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe when we get our, our shit together a little bit. Yeah. Anyways, I'm Kyle. I'm 21. I'm Mackenzie. I'm 19, but I look like I'm 14. Um, good night, good evening, good morning. I don't know what it is over there. <laughs> <laughs>